10 things you need to let go of before the end of the year. Today's video on the one year life transformation. Hello everyone, today I want to talk about 10 things you need to let go of. A lot of this life transformation isn't difficult, we just actually, it's, life's easier, we're giving up things rather than having to do extra things. And today I want to talk about 10 things to tick off your itinerary, to get rid of before the end of the year. As always, I'm going to begin with a quote on the subject, and that quote is, Some birds are not meant to be caged. That's all. Their feathers are too bright, their song's too sweet and wild, so you let them go. Or when you open the cage to feed them, they somehow fly out past you. And the part of you that knows it was wrong to imprison them in the first place rejoices. But still, the place where you live is that much more drab and empty because of their departure. Stephen King, The Shawshank Redemption. What a great book, Shawshank The Redemption. The film was done pretty well. It's true. I know that we love love and passion and relationships and beautiful things but you have to let them go because they only came into your life because there was space and you must let them go. These birds of you know, passion are too beautiful and too bright to be held in a cage and we've all seen it before. These beautiful love affairs that are just amazing after years and years and years of being controlled and condensed into a cage turn to something very, very different to what they began with. Only to see those people break up and to go on to form new beautiful relationships again um, and to let go of the past. I know my personal story was Hoarding, always hoarding, thinking if I just had enough stuff, if I had two couches, I'd never need to buy a couch again. I remember um, Fight Club, what an amazing movie, we've done a video on Fight Club where the uh, Edward Norton says, you know, I had everything, I had my dinnerware, I had my glassware, I had my, you know, my uh, wine glasses all sorted out, I was so close to completion, that was me. I thought that all the assets I had, I really would never need anything more. The reality is, is that... Those things never brought me anything except for more hoarding. When John D. Rockefeller was asked, how much does the American man need to be happy? How much money does he need? John D. Rockefeller replied, apparently, a little bit more. Things come into your life and out of your life, and you have to allow that to happen. Otherwise, you hold on to dead things. So how do we do this? Well, number one, we need to let go of failed relationships. When you text someone and they don't text back, we'll let it go. When you know, when you're waiting for someone, you know, you've, you've had a breakup and you're hoping they'll come back to you, let it go. Let go of your old relationships. They have gone for a reason. You learned something that were very, very special. People quite often think, right, but I can't forget about this person. You know, they meant so much to me. What they meant to you was the lesson that you learned. You take the lesson, not the person. They would hate to think that they're a burden on your mind right now. Let go of all the failed relationships, the relationships that have ended, because all relationships will end, so let them go so new and fresh ones can come in. How many people take years to get up over a breakup and during that time ignore or aren't in a place to meet someone new? Number two, give up on your promotional past. I know that you believe that once you're the state manager, the regional manager, you'll become the state manager, once the state manager will be the country manager, then you can be the CFO, then the CEO, then you can be on the board, give it up. Give it up, they're all mental fantasies. And what happens when you're the CFO? Are you gonna feel better? You will feel no different to who you are now. And we know that through our video on the hedonic treadmill, which is the psychological principle of things settling and becoming normal after a while. You, your promotional path will be your promotional path. That your moment that you have right now is the only way you can affect it. If you really are dedicated to being the CEO, be present and do your work now and allow that to come to you. Waiting and being impatient is about thinking about the thing before you get it. But when you don't think about it, everything comes and it's always great and it's a surprise and you're so grateful. Number three, material clutter. Get it out. You don't need it. You don't need it. I was very, a, a big, I was very guilty of this. I had posters, motivational things all around. It just clutters your brain. Once you walk out of our, our houses every day, we're bombarded by millions of messages from people trying to sell us things we don't need. The last thing you need is more of this junk in your house reminding you of upgrades and extra things you need. And you very little to be happy that one of the greatest emperors of Rome, Marcus Aurelius, found it interesting that when he went on campaign and he left Rome you know, with the marble and the grapes and the, the orgies and all that sort of stuff, that he would be happy at lying down in a tent at peace without all the distractions. Isn't that interesting? Putting others first. Let go. There's no such thing as put, you cannot put other people first. As much as you try, you cannot because you'll be in the way. Put yourself first and allow the power that comes from that to bring other people forward. 
give up happiness deferral. When I, insert X, have a X, I will feel X, okay? Insert whatever you want in those X's, it's not going to happen. You can, deferring happiness is the most ridiculous concept ever. So many people don't go on a trip abroad for 25 years to save for a house, and once they have that house, they don't feel the security that they told themselves by saving for the house one day I would feel secure. They don't feel secure because they feel like they've missed out on all this fun. Don't delay happiness. Happiness comes from the moment. Yes, it's great that you know that you're saving for a house, you might have it paid off, but don't associate a feeling to that in the future, otherwise your brain will reward you by not giving you that feeling until you get it. And who wants that? Who wants to be happy 25 years from now? Wouldn't you much rather be happier now? Bank account goals. I'd, if you want $100,000, that's great. Drop it from your mind constantly. This idea, this secret, the book The Secret, which was nice, I had some smart people in it, but if you ask those authors now who are involved in it about The Secret, they sort of distance themselves from it. Because ultimately, thinking about things you don't have, we know, psychologically, makes you anxious and stressed. Appreciating what you have makes you happy. You can do it in CAT scans. You can see people's brains the way they work. So if you have $20,000 in the bank and you want 100, that's great, that's fine. But you can't get 100 by stressing about it, thinking about it, and looking at it on a vision board. It doesn't happen. I'm really sorry to break that myth. It doesn't happen. Being grateful about what you have makes you a happier person, which allows more opportunities to come into your life, which allow you to add more value, for example, in regards to your bank accounts. Fourth to last, stop ignoring your feelings. Your brain has lost all credibility, bang. And I guarantee you, think about the, think about someone in your life. Have you ever really, really thought that person was an ass? I bet you have. Have you ever thought that person was a superstar? I'm sure you have. We do that all the time. The brain is just this fickle you know, broadcasting system. It's not you. Your feelings in the moment are normally accurate. That gut feel is you. That gut feel is evolution and your hormones telling you that something's wrong. Pay attention to your feelings and your emotions. Ignore the thoughts. Third to last, you need to give up on a sedentary lifestyle. Your risk of heart disease from a sedentary job, which is 90% of Australians are in sedentary jobs, is higher than chain smoking. Sitting in a chair will kill you, and so it should, because when we're nomadic people, the individuals who are sedentary were obviously not fit for the hunt, and nature just culled them off with different diseases. Keep moving, no more sedentary nature. You should be moving all the time whenever you can. It might be a stand-up desk, it might be you know, uh, going to exercise at lunchtime, but a sedentary lifestyle will kill you. Second to last, give up on TV. You've got a simple choice. Do you want to live the glamorous lifestyle of the people in the screen, or do you want to have that lifestyle? Because you can't have both. I can guarantee you successful people don't watch a lot of TV. They can't because they're too busy enjoying their lives. Groucho Marx once said he found TV very educational because every time someone turned one on, he went in the other room to read a book. And finally, give up on perfection. Perfection is an idea and it changes. Think about your perfect woman or man or partner 10 years ago. I bet you there's differences now to what that perfect person would have been. Perfection is a moving target. Therefore, just give up on it because you are already perfect. That's why so many people, that's why they say perfection is impossible because you're already perfect. Therefore, you can't then achieve it or find it when you're already that. It's like a, it's like a blade trying to cut itself or an eye trying to see itself. It can't happen. You are perfect and you are simply adding layers of perfection to yourself. Something to think about. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Don't put, that, don't put that in the future. Don't put that away. Do it tomorrow. Watch the next video. I can't wait to see you. That's why. Until then, goodbye.